Hello again everyone, welcome back to this series on how to draw iconic movie characters. Now as usual, before we start, if you haven't subscribed, could you do that please? That would be great. And also ring that little bell icon if you want to know what's coming up next. Okay, the iconic movie character today is Gandalf, the wonderful wizard from The Lord of the Rings. Uh, now I'm going to start with his hat. Uh, you know, the long pointed hat that he has, but the view I'm taking is from the front, so the hat is kind of coming out, the, the point rather is coming out of the back, so you won't actually see much of it. You see the curve of the top coming in like that, and the back, you'll see it foreshortened, you see a bit of it coming in like that behind them, okay? And then the actual brim of the hat comes in a curve like that, very wide on the other side, and way down to it here, curving up, that kind of shape there. Um, the brim is quite thick, it's made of a kind of thick felt material I think. So you'll see the thick edge, there's the top part, thick edge coming in a bit like that and curving around before disappearing there. And this part will come in and go around like that. And his head, Gandalf's head, forehead rather, appears in here and with the hair on the other side. So that's his forehead and you have his eyebrows coming in just about here. Quite broad, quite thick eyebrows coming in like that on the other side. And below that, the eyes, quite distinctive eyes. Um, Ian McKellen who plays Gandalf. You have these eyes which kind of slope up like that, both sides. That kind of slopes up too. So you've got that shape there. And then this eye, slightly narrower than the other one, you get that kind of shape with the bottom curving like that. And he's looking that way. So there's the pupil going in. This eye here, you see the skin fold like that. And then the corner of the eye coming in like that and doing a curve there. So you get these quite distinctive shapes going up the way. This is other people coming in here with the highlight and the dance coming in there. Now furrowed brows, here we have these creases come to the top of his nose, very broad nose, coming down like that with quite a broad tip to it like that with the nostrils coming out either side. Okay, you get that kind of slightly round shape on the tip of the nose there. And below that, of course, you have the beard, or the moustache rather, first of all. And the mouth is quite wide. It comes down in a kind of bow shape there and curves down on the other side. And the top of the lip comes up a bit more sharply with that long curve there and curving down like that. And the bottom lip is fuller on this side and it kind of pushes up quickly on that side. So you get that kind of shape there, okay? And of course his face is pretty baggy and wrinkly, you know, so you get these bags under his eyes like this coming in and you get lines coming down on the other side of his nose here. I said, put the uh, moustache in. Long strokes for the moustache here coming down either side. And as it comes down to the side of his mouth, what you do is you draw kind of long curving lines like that. And these lines kind of flow into the beard like that. And below his mouth here, a slight gap, and then the beard starts about here. Again, yeah, use lots of little lines, concentrating the centre and the, kind of fall away to the side there. And you get these curves coming as well. It's nicer to do a curve that doubles like that rather than one that just goes in one shape, you know. Now these lines up here from his hair uh, kind of go around his cheekbone here, his cheekbone 
is just this area here. So you draw that kind of shape there, like his cheekbone. And of course the hairs of his beard come from that shape there. And these will curve out. You got a nice curve doing that. And then these ones curving out, coming back in again. And then more of these lines coming down from his beard. Exactly the same up here. Get these lines around his cheekbone here. And the hair of his beard coming in like that. And then as the hat dips down, you see the underside of it a bit more, which kind of goes down like that. And then his hair will appear just in here like that. And as it comes above his ear, it just curls away a bit like that. Little bits coming out. You see the bottom of his ear appearing probably a bit here somewhere. Like that. And the hair, of course, and his beard coming up there. Now, his beard is very long. When he becomes Gandalf the White, he gets a bit shorter. But uh, when he's Gandalf the Grey, it's really quite long. He comes way down to about, oh, way down to about here. And you get these curves. The curves on the hair uh, are a lot longer at the top here, but as they come down, they get a bit more frizzly like that, a bit more curled, you know, little bits. I'm going to work on that uh, in a moment, but I'm just putting the main shapes in just now for you. And these here, the hair of his, the side of his head actually, curve and you do nice kind of things like that, those kind of shapes. And then almost like ringlets, in curvy shapes like that. And these ones here carve out around his shoulder and his shoulder, and his hands come up about here. Shoulder on this side comes down. Let's see, there's some more hair coming up here, remember. And his cloak and his shoulder come up here on either side. And you get the lines of his cloak coming down like that. I'll put more detail on that in a second. More curves and more wrinkles. And then like in there and so on. But his hand comes into this area here. Again, it's foreshortened. The forearm is coming towards you. So what you see is the staff coming up like that. But his hand grasping it coming in like that. There's a knuckles of his hand and knuckles of his fingers there coming in and as they double over around the staff and that's actually over here a bit more. That comes in there. You get that kind of shape there. Okay, and the staff which goes up like that, it's all twisted, like almost like a root coming up. And you get various shapes like that in it. And as it gets to the top, you get a kind of branching out, these odd shape, on slightly broken shapes, almost as if it's a tree been struck by lightning, you know. You get that kind of shape, twisted and gnarled. Almost like fingers doubling back like that. Coming out from the central part here, another bit coming in there. And then kind of almost like a pincer, that thing there. With more twists on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to get that to the sleeve by the way, I'm going to get a little darker pencil. I also had to put in some detail. Okay, right, with the darker pencil, the 6B now, I've been actually filling up these lines and putting a bit more detail in, like uh, these little wrinkles and so on on the staff, and also a bit more work on the beard here. I've lengthened it slightly actually, realise it's a bit longer than I had drawn it originally, and I've gone over these lines in his cloak and sharpened up these lines of the hair and so on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, a bit of shading. Okay, 
Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, this side. The light's mainly coming from the left here. So this side of the hat will be in shadow. So you get a bit of shading coming out there, a bit of a crease there, and a bit of a kind of dimple shape coming in here. And you do that, and that line will go further along there like that. And of course around the back of the pointy bit here, <laughs> like that. Okay, and of course deep shadow in here. And I would start around about there, the edge of the hair, put quite a bit of weight in your pencil, you know, shade that in, and you have a circular motion like that. So that'll do just now, because I can put other hatch lines in later. So I'm going to shade that in dark, and this bit around here is going to be very dark too, just right at the edge of the hair but getting lighter as it comes out towards the edge. Okay, I've shaded both sides of his hat in now. As I can see, this is much darker than that. Took a bit of weight off the pencil there. Now I'm going to move on to the face. Obviously under here, on his forehead, is going to be shadowed. So you shade that in like that. Of the hair as well. I'll be picking out some of these lines later with a darker pencil or with a pen. We'll see how things go. Uh, but shade it right down here, and then a bit more pencil work on the eyebrows there. Pick them out a bit more. And down the side of the nose, you get these kind of wrinkles, you know. And then a bit of shading down this side. Coming around under his eye pouch there. <laughs> and on this side as well, you get shading up here and around there. Another line under his eye there, like that. And a bit of shading in here. Coming around the cheekbone, remember that shape? Like that. And then back to this cheekbone, which comes up to join the shading in there. We've got a bit more shading up under there too, and it's quite dark in this part here underneath the hair. A bit more shading on the hair there. Take that down a bit. It's not too light. And then some sections of the hair are darker than others, so you get this kind of section being dark in there. And another section under the ear there. See that ear shape? That be darker under there as the hair comes out from underneath it. Take that line back out, that tone back a bit. And then up to the moustache. Okay, so I'm just going to work on this now. Put a bit more weight on my pencil to delineate these curly lines of his beard and moustache. And as I say, as you come down, a bit more frizzy. Like that, a bit more frizzy. Okay. All right, I'll work right down to the bottom of the beard now and uh, possibly take a bit of uh, of this out, a bit of this drawing out here to give a sensation of the light catching that bit, you know, being a bit lighter than the rest. Okay, move on to the shadows under the beard now and under the hair here. Um, you'll get some deep parts of shading coming in like that, and also in between the tresses here of his hair, as they come down. Some of them going right up, like that. And of course, under the beard as it comes down around his cloak. So, put some heavy weight on your pencil and just, you know, don't do a heavy line, but just try and imagine the, the shadows appearing underneath the little curls of the hair in his beard there. I put a, a strap across his chest here. I also added his thumb out of there, I forgot his thumb. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit more shading up here. And some of this bits of shading will go down along the creases in his cloak like that. It'll join up. There's quite a deep crease coming along here. One along here. Okay, so these are the main ones I'm putting in just now. So once I've done that, I'll go back over them again and just work on that a bit more. Okay, so those are the main ones, of course, shading round about his 
knuckles here because that's his open sleeve, so it's dark in there. And so on. Okay, right, I'm going to start shading this a bit more depth in these creases here and that. And I'll catch you when I've done that. Okay, I've been shading his cloak and moving on to his hands now. Gently around these knuckles here and a bit of shading at the bottom part of his fingers. Like that. Okay. Maybe a little touch in here as you come around. And then up to the staff. Now obviously a bit of shading on these fingers here, so shade that down. And then as you come up, one side will be lighter than the other, so we'll put a bit of shading on the right hand side here as we come up and round these whorls like that. Try and get the sense of the twisted nature of the of the staff, these writhing shapes almost alive, you know, coming up like that. So darker on this side, and lighter on the other. Like that, okay. Okay, now I'm going to look at uh, what I've done, and see if what needs to be Worked on again or brought out a bit more. Okay. Right, I think just a bit more work there. To be a more extension on his mouth there. And a bit more shading on his eye. Coming up to that point there. Be a bit darker in here. Like that. And what you can do is go do a bit of hatching, a bit of line work, like that, just to bring out the artistic quality of your drawing, like that. You could even do a bit more work in here, for instance, you know, uh, the actual shape of the hat goes around on a curve like that, so you could do some, some lines following the curve. Just an added dimension, you know? And down here too, you can do a bit of hatching on the, on the cloak. Make it that be a bit more impressionistic, okay? Like that. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you, I hope you have a go yourself. So good luck with that, and I hope you can join me again for another tutorial, but in the meantime of course all the best, and happy drawing!